Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the 8th lecture of the course on sociological perspectives on modernity. In the last lecture, I mean in the 7th lecture, we have started with Marx and his theoretical and methodological positions to reflect on modernity and its constituents. Okay. We have discussed the way Weber contributed heavily to the development of substantive sociological theory and to the debate on methodology. We have also discussed how Weber's methodological writings, Weber's theoretical positions are usually characterized as effecting a reconciliation between positivism and neo Kantianism. I mean, at times Weber uh, uh, rejects the view attributable to uh, some neo Kantians um, that the cultural sciences um, are exclusively concerned with the uniqueness of their objects of study and the category of causality is inapplicable in them. And at times, nonetheless, Weber was committed to neo Kantian insistence on the methodological peculiarities of the cultural sciences. For, for Weber, these, these uh, methodological peculiarities are centered around two related concepts namely value relevance and interpretative understanding. For Weber, we have also discussed for Weber the cultural sciences differ from natural sciences in the distinctive role of valuations I mean value relevance in the formation of concepts and in the distinctive type of knowledge involved in them. And a third area of methodological differences was thought by Weber to be the use of idealizations in the cultural sciences. I mean there must be a uh, distinction between uh, cultural sciences and natural sciences in terms of value relevance as well as interpretative understanding of social action. Weber for, for Weber sociology in the sense in which this highly ambiguous word is used here is a science which attempts the interpretive understanding of social action in order thereby to arrive at a causal explanation of its course and effects. We have discussed I mean how there are uh, the I mean uh, how three things are extremely important in this case. I mean sociology is a science one, sociology is a science that attempts the interpretative understanding of social action two and any kind of interpretation must involve explanation. I mean when I say explanation I mean causal relationship, cause and effect relationship. Okay. And, and an exposition of Weber's methodological positions, theoretical positions can usefully proceed with an analysis of each of the concepts and contrasts involved in, in this definition of sociology by Max Weber. To begin with, we we, uh, we discussed, uh, I mean first the concept of social action. I mean the, the characterization of sociology, if you uh, look at the characterization of sociology in terms of the understanding uh, and explanation of social action, which involves two important contrasts. 
when I say understanding I, I refer to the neo Kantian school of thought, when I say explanation I refer to the positivistic school of thought. Okay. First Weber is distinguishing uh, the, 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 the paradigmatic objects of sociological knowledge for him, I mean those individual social actions, their meanings and causes from the supra individual social entities, I mean states, uh, institutions, classes, uh, collective consciousnesses and so on, whose existence is supposed in much sociological theorizing and also everyday thinking about social relations. Okay? We have already discussed this. Weber does not actually deny the existence of such, such, uh, such supra individual social entities, but argues that for interpretative sociology, these uh, supra individual social entities must be treated as solely the resultants and modes of organization of the particular acts of individual persons in contradistinction with what Marx said about modes of production. Okay? This is different from Marx. Weber's uh, position would uh, here would now be regarded as methodological individualist involving the claim that in so far as collectivities may be said to have uh, characteristics independent of the individuals which make them up, those characteristics have, are to be explained in terms of individual actors and their actions. Okay? Then, then in the last lecture, we, we also discussed uh, methodological individualism, which refers to uh, theoretical positions, I mean which, which, uh, 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 which refers to theoretical positions holding that adequate sociological accounts necessarily involve reference to three things, one individuals, secondly uh, their interpretations of their circumstances and thirdly the reasons uh, and motives for the actions that those individuals undertake. And Weber says that such action okay, by no means necessarily follows from the sharing of a common class situation in contradistinction with Marx. For, for Marx, whatever collective action that, that we undertake okay, necessarily follows from the sharing of a common class situation. But here, but in the context of Weber, such action by no means necessarily follows from the sharing of a common class situation. Okay. And we stopped here in the last class. Now, in today's class, we are going to cover interpretative understanding, Verstehen, um, and when I say interpretative understanding, I mean direct understanding and indirect understanding, alternatively known as observational understanding and explanatory understanding respectively okay. and uh, what is culture for Weber um, and then we will discuss uh, economic phenomena and, and the relationship between economy and religion and then we will move on to uh, Weber's interpretation of modernity through the lenses of those four pillars of modernity namely uh, holism or totality. Uh, reflexivity, rationality and social movements. Okay? Now, let us start with interpretative understanding. Prima facie, interpretive sociology refers to a variety of forms of sociology on the on uh, 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 united by an emphasis on the necessity for sociologists to grasp or understand or interpret actors meanings. It can legitimately interpret course of action in terms of concepts such as the state, classes and so on, 
without commitment to any of the entities. In 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 this case, then uh, I mean I mean further I mean moreover, interpretative understanding refers to a method that emphasizes on the importance of understanding of intentional human action. I mean purposive human action. I mean goal oriented human action. I mean instrumental rationality. Okay, we have already discussed instrumental rationality as uh, as compared to uh, substantive rationality. Substantive rationality aims at the means, the methods, the modes. Okay, whereas instrumental rationality aims at goals, objectives, aims, and so. On. Okay, I mean. Uh, when 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 I say uh, or uh, when I uh, when Weber says that interpretative understanding uh, refers to a method uh, uh, that that stresses the importance of understanding of intentional human action, I mean he is a neo Kantian. He he deploys the method of neo Kantian. Because it it involves interpretation uh, of multiple data systems. Okay, he is no longer a positivist here. Okay, um, I mean this 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 school of thought. Okay, uh, that also you will also uh, you can also find the traces of. This, the, or you can find the roots of this 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 kind of thinking uh, in the Verstehen school of thought in Austria. Okay, that no, uh, there cannot be any dichotomy between science and non-science. Okay, these dichotomies are artificially created. Okay. Uh, um, we must, uh, I mean, first and school of thought. They, the, I mean, uh, this is, this is, uh, they were more guided by neo Kantian school of thought. Okay, that um, we must look at. Uh, uh, we must, we must challenge. We must interrogate the demarcation between science and non-science. We must interrogate the autonomy of science absolute autonomy of science. We must also interrogate the cognitive authority of science, okay? because science also is a social creation. I mean all knowledge including scientific knowledge is socially caused as David Bloor said it. Okay? That is why for Weber interpretative understanding is a method which stresses the importance of understanding of intentional human action. Without goal, without objective, we do not have any kind of action. Okay? I mean, I mean uh, semantically, okay, any account is an interpretation. Okay? Uh, Weber considers understanding or, or Verstehen I mean in German uh, understanding means I mean Verstehen means uh, understanding okay understanding means Verstehen okay um, Weber considers understanding or Verstehen to be a method of elucidating the motivations for action which did not prelude the sociologist making generalizations from the data. Okay. In sum, whilst there is a general commitment to empathy okay, and understanding from the actor's point of view, the research that follow uh, that flows from interpretation is so varied as to be difficult to categorize as a school, possibly because of because the meaning of interpretation is itself subject to interpretation. I mean interpretation of interpretations. Okay. Let us let us go one by one. Okay. 
when Weber says that whilst there is a general commitment to empathy, what is empathy? Weber used the term cognitive empathy, I mean understanding the need of the other, understanding the role of the other. In the, in the pre-modern phenomena, in the pre-modern stage, in the pre-modern era, okay, perhaps, perhaps uh, this, this aspect of empathy, empathy was not theorized upon, was not reflected upon. But, but in 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 with the wake of in uh, I mean, uh, in the wake of the Enlightenment uh, 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 emergence of science as a social institution, uh, modernity, rise in our intellectual and political consciousness, we try to uh, replace sympathy with empathy. Okay. We need not be sympathetic, but we must be empathetic. We, I must try to understand the need of the other, the role of the other. I mean, I must be able to put my fit in other shoes to understand their problems. Okay. That is the job of a researcher. Okay. Then, then, when there is a general commitment to such empathy from the actor's point of view, the research that flows from interpretation again becomes different as to be difficult to categorize as a school, school of thought. Maybe because the meaning of interpretation is itself subject to interpretation, thereby we tend to arrive at multiple interpretations. I mean, interpretation of interpretations. Okay. Okay. Then, when I say understanding at Verstehen, for Weber, Verstehen is not a method at all, okay. but an objective, an achievement, a goal. I mean, it is a distinctive type of knowledge which may be achieved by a variety of methods or no method at all. For Weber, the concept of Verstehen refers primarily to the spontaneous and immediate recognition of acts and their meanings in everyday life. Okay? It is very important. When I say, when, when Weber says, the, uh, I mean Verstehen, uh, I mean understanding, understanding the need of the other, understanding the role of the other is primarily spontaneous and immediate recognition of acts and their meanings which they, they, they attach to, they generate okay, in their everyday life. Okay. Then, then, what we saw in interpretative understanding I mean, we, we, we saw, uh, I mean, interpretative understanding that refers to a method uh, that stresses the importance of understanding of intentional human action, I mean, purposive human action, goal oriented human action, such, such, and from there we have, we are discussing Verstehen understanding and so on. Such interpretative understanding has two parts. Okay. One, what are those two parts? One, interpretation of the textual or linguistic meaning of a cultural product. And secondly, value interpretation does not involve evaluation of action or product, but involves selective conceptualization of the subject in relation to some value. Okay. Let us go one by one. Okay. Um, what is, what does it imply? When I say interpretation, first one, interpretation of the textual and linguistic meaning of a cultural product, 
if i say you see i teach uh, uh, at iit guwahati uh, i mean uh, uh, which is located in the no uh, northeastern part of india in assam particularly we use um, handloom woven uh, textile products okay silk products also there is a famous place in in uh, uh, in assam in guwahati itself i mean uh, near uh, sualkosi it is named sual there uh, people use mekla mekla they, it can be uh, basically it's a sari which which women wear okay it is a cultural product in assam uh, we celebrate bihu it is a cultural product it is not a religious product religious issue but it is a cultural product okay uh, many 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 festivals uh, in india uh, you will find they may uh, they may appear to us as religious but they are essentially cultural okay uh, and and different textual and linguistic meanings are attached to it attached to those cultural products okay and secondly when i say value interpretation okay because it emanates from that value relevance okay value interpretation does not involve whether i am going to evaluate or examine a particular cultural product or not i am not going to do that rather value interpretation involves selective conceptualization of the object in relation to some value what kind of value be it social value be it aesthetic value be it cognitive value okay then somebody may say what do you mean by those values social values aesthetic values cognitive values because in economics value means people know only value in use value in exchange in economic terms but this is not this is not a modern characteristic of value this is a pre modern uh, element of value values in in the modernist uh, construction are a combination of two things one cultural relevance and meanings that they attach or they that they generate that's why here if you look at this uh, uh, if you add meanings to cultural relevance okay we tend to arrive at value interpretation or values be it social value aesthetic value or cognitive these are very important okay according to weber but but when we when weber said uh, these values involve selective conceptualization of the object in relation to some value okay what is that selective conceptualization then okay according to weber selection is based on cultural relevance and and value for a sociologist is always an object of study in the pre modern scenario values were considered something uh, esoteric in nature they cannot be questioned but for a sociologist for a social scientist for a researcher okay even values can be must be interrogated okay weber divides interpretative understanding in two parts one is direct understanding and the other indirect understanding 
direct understanding of social action is alternatively known as observational understanding of social action and indirect understanding is alternatively known as explanatory understanding of social action. Okay? And and both have the elements of interpretation. What I observe, I as I said earlier that I do not tend to observe anything and everything. I tend to make observations on the basis of certain certain amount of selection. When I when I do that, when I when I tend to select from a wide range of phenomena from a wide range of potentially observable aspects of nature, then, then what I what I do I, t I, uh, I, I tend to put my perspective into that process of selection. Okay. When I do that, I tend to interpret the way I have put my perspectives. Your perspective, if your perspective differs from my perspective, then your interpretation will differ. And let me tell you, nothing in this world is de-ideological, nothing in this world is apolitical. If this is so, then we must have multiple interpretations. So, we will have uh, uh, interpretation of interpretations. Okay. Even even when I explain, when I tend to uh, dwell upon explanatory understanding of social action, I tend to look at explanatory understanding of social action with some amount of interpretation. Again, the process of selection will be there. Again, the uh, uh, again, I will have to um, deploy my perspective to um, make some strategy to select and so on. If I say it involves, I have to put, uh, I have to make some strategy to uh, uh, go ahead with the process of selection, okay. it involves a method or a strategy. When I say it involves a method or strategy, okay, what is that method or strategy? No, that is that imaginative identification to be spontaneous and immediate recognition of the acts and their meanings in everyday life. What is that imaginative identification? No, this imaginative identification is processed through rule governed strategy within a said culture. And it is possible uh, uh, only when both observer and observed share culture. Okay. I mean it is possible I mean this, this imaginative identification is, which is processed through uh, rule governed said strategy within a said culture. It is possible only when the knower and the known, the observer and the observed, the researcher and the researched share culture. Okay? We will see if they do not share culture what will happen, but prima facie here we have discussed what is imaginative identification which is processed through rule governed said culture uh, i mean rule governed strategy within a said culture okay which is very important and and from now onward we will we'll see first of all what is that rule governed strategy within a said culture i mean alternatively it is known as rule governed said culture. Okay. What is that rule governed said? Rule governed said culture is based on 
at least three things. One is relevance, I mean importance, significance. Secondly, acceptability and thirdly, elegance. Okay? When I say rule governed said culture, norm bound said culture, those norms, those rules, those strategies, those methods, okay, they must be relevant to my own culture, that must be relevant to your own culture. If they are not relevant to our respective cultures, then we will not have any norm bound or rule governed said culture. Okay. They must have some amount of significance, importance, relevance to both cultures. If it is relevant, then there is a possibility that both cultures would accept it. Then the second one is acceptability. The third one, they must be elegant. I mean, they must be able to be dynamic they cannot remain static. That is why I have been maintaining that whether you say economic, polity, culture, society, norms, values, uh, said culture, um, geography, rules, norms, value systems, they all are dynamic, they are not static in nature. They keep on changing, because our real world phenomena uh, keep on changing. If our real world phenomena undergo transformation, then all these rules, norms, theories, they will also undergo changes. Concepts, they all will undergo changes. Okay? And there, we must be able to select properly. That is why I said earlier, that selection is based on cultural relevance. Suppose, I will give you, let me give you an example. Suppose, somebody will say that what do you want to work on your PhD thesis or MA digitation or MPhil digitation. See, generally, in general, we do not say that I want to study uh, the I mean hailing from Indian uh, subcontinent I mean hailing from India. Somebody generally will not say that no I want to study uh, the consumption pattern of American middle class. that may be a beautiful study, beautiful topic, I do not know. But, given the context, given the cultural relevance, generally we do not select these topics. We will say, no, we will look, we want to look at uh, the consumption pattern of Indian middle class. Or we will say, Assamese middle class, Bengali middle class. Telugu middle class. We may say that. That is also, these are also controversial issues, but one may study that. Why not? But, we do not look at uh, other societies to study them. That is why, for Weber, selection is based on cultural relevance. Okay. This is very important. Okay. Then, as we have earlier said that this, this, this imaginative identification is processed through rule governed strategy within a said culture, which is possible only when both observer and observed said culture but there may be a situation when you will say see that no observer and observer and observed researcher and researched 
knower and known, they do not share culture. Then what will happen? Then, then for Weber, if then if observer and observed do not share culture, then observer may give a different meaning. Suppose if I go to Australia, I want to study their culture, their food habits, their uh, the way they uh, uh, wear dresses, clothes, uh, the way they celebrate their festivals. If I do not have, if I do not attempt to make any kind of understanding about that system, then I'll, I may give a different meaning of meaning to those those uh, items, those products, those habits, those festivals. That is why if observer and observed do not share culture, then observer may give a different meaning or observed should get socialized into the culture that the observer wants to study. Then both will both ops, both these things are uh, problematic, they may uh, pose serious threats to quality research, uh, reliable research, okay, valid research. That is why uh, observed or observer, uh, observed in fact uh, sh should give that account uh, which is reliable, which is valid and observer and both observer and observed must make an attempt to uh, uh, share culture uh, to an extent, so that uh, that would enable them to, to make the, the production of knowledge more valid, more reliable and, and authentic. Okay? Then, then we are talking about observer, observed, share culture, but, but actually what is culture then for for Weber. Weber defines culture as the totality of real objects to which we attach generally acknowledged values or complexes of meaning constituted by value. Then what are what were real objects for, for uh, Marx? The rational is the real. Right? For, for Weber, what is real? The real objects represent our culture. Culture is the totality of real objects, objects which are found in the real in, in, in the world of reality, to which we attach generally acknowledged values or complexes of meaning constituted by values. For Weber, culture consists of all those items produced by human beings for the sake of value ends. For if, if, if this is so, if this is so, then, then for, for Weber, such understanding of culture such such verstehen comprises two things one imaginative identification is useful i mean imaginative identification is is processed uh, not to evaluate a, a, a product but it involves selective conceptualization of of certain value i mean may may be be it, uh, be it uh, uh, aesthetic value, be it uh, social value, be it cognitive value. Okay? That is why this, this imaginative identification is useful, but it is not an essential condition for a meaningful action. Okay? Secondly, what Weber emphasized on that uh, then, I mean, we must recognize the rational connection between 
means and ends when you when you try to when you attempt to make an understanding of the situation circumstances conditions in intentional human action okay, we must try to make uh, uh, or we must try to recognize the rational connection between means and ends that's why we must recognize the rational connection between uh, substantive rationality as well as instrumental rationality okay this is very important okay then 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 if when we when we come to indirect understanding indirect or explanatory understanding it involves two things for weber to what extent we will explain what is the uh, if i say no this explanation is not adequate this explanation is insufficient then weber came out very strongly came up uh, very strongly when he said explanation must be adequate at the level of meaning Mean, meaning generation, mean, meanings which are attached to individual social action and their entities, I mean individual social entities. Okay. At the same time, explanation must be adequate at the level of statistical generalizations. If when I say explanation must be adequate at the level of meaning, Weber was a neo Kantian. When Weber said explanation must be adequate at the level of statistical generalizations, he is a positivist. That is why I said, when I said Weber's theoretical positions and methodological writings, uh, uh, they mediate uh, between positivism as well as neo Kantianism, if, if, uh, if meaning represents neo kantianism then statistical generalizations rep re represent positivism that's why i said if positivism depicts the quantitative research methods um, in social sciences uh, then neo kantianism represents qualitative research methods in social sciences then weber was very much worried about one component he kept on thinking yes explanation must be adequate at the level of meaning explanation must also be adequate at the level of statistical generalizations then what is the meaning of this adequate who will decide adequacy whether something is adequate or not it also involves interpretation i'll say no 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 it is not adequate you will say no no it is adequate it, it also involves certain amount of interpretation. This is a modern phenomenon. Things are pretty subjective in nature. World is very subjective. Nothing is objective in this world. Okay. Then Weber said, adequacy is based on generalizations and generalizations are based on experience. Here, Weber is becoming again a positivist, an empiricist when he refers to experience. That is why Weber said there is a probability that a particular action often occurs in the same way. Okay. If motives are the antecedent, then then social action will be the consequent. Then what is a motive? Okay, if there is no motive, there is no cause, there is no reason, uh, there is no goal, there is no ambition, there is no aim, there is no objective. 
then we will not undertake any kind of social action. The kind of social action that we undertake is very much contingent upon certain motives, certain causes, certain reasons. Okay? That is why if motives are the antecedent, then social action will be consequent. Okay. Uh, for Weber, what is a motive? No, for, for Weber, you know, I mean Weber defines motive as a complex subjective meaning which seems to the actor herself or himself or to the observer as an adequate ground for the conduct in question. For Weber, multiple motives can lead to a similar kind of or same kind of social action. Okay. I mean, I mean uh, we can have, uh, I, can, I can go back a little, uh, I mean uh, when, when uh, when I say multiple motives can lead to a similar and same kind of social action, in fact, uh, and and we are trying to provide some kind of explanation. Okay, it is interesting to see. I mean, there is another sociologist of repute, Emil Durkheim. In fact, uh, August Comte, Herbert Spencer, Emil Durkheim, Max Weber, and Karl Marx. They are known as the founders of 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 sociology. Uh, not so much uh, uh, in in sense of disciplinary formation, but all, but more so uh, in in the sense of advancing the, the thinking in sociology, the thinking in and through sociology. Okay, okay. Uh, once uh, once Durkheim, uh, in fact, uh, while while dwelling upon. Uh, 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 what may be the possible models of explanation? Okay. Durkheim proposed monocausal model of explanation. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, there is single cause, single effect model. If I say my consumption depends on my income, but apart from my consumption, there are many other things which depend on my income. Right? That is why Durkheim's analysis does not hold good here in this context, in this context okay? monocausal model, single cause, single effect model. But for Weber, it holds, it, it holds partially good, I mean it, it, it uh, a, uh, he is partially, I mean to a great extent correct, but not absolutely again, when he emphasized on multiple causes single effect model. The same kind of social action may be emanated through different kinds of motives. Why do I earn money? Why do you earn money? There may be multiple motives. Yeah, I want to earn money for food, for clothing, for shelter. Somebody may is earning money not only for food, clothing, and shelter, but also uh, for other conspicuous consumption. Suppose somebody will say, uh, population problem or overpopulation is a cause of underdevelopment. Okay. But I can also say that no underdevelopment also is a cause of uh, overpopulation. Okay. There, there are different ways of looking at things. Okay. In today's world, what we are looking at, we, we, we often come across multiple causes, multiple effects model. Okay. Uh, the, the, the 
central dimensions of of um, of Weber's analysis are that uh, uh, economic, religious, and power relations are crucial sociological explanations. Okay, <coughs> what what <coughs> uh, uh, what what Weber pointed out that. Uh, uh, power relations, power structures are not simply represented through economic progress, but also religion. To, to buttress the argument, to strengthen the argument, Weber made three types of economic phenomena. Okay. What kind, what, what are those three kinds of economic phenomena? One economic phenomena, secondly economically relevant phenomena and thirdly economically conditioned phenomena. When Weber referred to economic phenomena, he tried to look at the institutions deliberately created and used for economic ends. Okay. Uh, economically relevant phenomena are those religious, uh, legal and religious phenomena, which are not primarily economic, but have consequences, uh, uh, which are economic in nature in certain circumstances. Suppose legal institutions, religious institutions, they are not primarily economic, but they have significant implications for 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 economic power, economic prowess. Suppose, if I have to give you an example of economic phenomena, institutions deliberately created uh, and used for, um, uh, sorry, uh, used for economic ends, suppose market. Market is deliberately created and used for economic goals, economic objectives, economic ends. But when you look at economically relevant phenomena, which are, uh, I mean they are legal and religious institutions, which are not primarily economic, but have consequences, which are economic in nature in certain circumstances. Even a court, a temple, a mosque, a church, all these legal and religious institutions, they are not primarily economic in nature. But, but they have significant implications for the ways in which uh, economic laws are also applicable to them. Okay. And thirdly, Weber pointed out economically conditioned phenomena. What are those? I mean, Weber refers to the stratification systems and the state, I mean stratification systems, I mean hierarchical structures, caste, race, class, gender, ethnicity, nationality, citizenship, okay? rural urban uh, divide, okay? they, are, they are all stratificatory systems. Okay? These stratification, uh, stratification systems as well as the political institutions, namely the state, are not directly the economic phenomenon. Obviously, the state is not an economic phenomenon, the economic institution. The state is always a political institution. Okay? But it is, but the state is very much conditioned by economic phenomena, though it is a political institution. Though stratification systems, mostly their social institutions may be caste, gender, patriarchy, um, uh, um, race, um, uh, um, um, class ethnicity, nationality, citizenship, they are, they are mostly 
their social institutions, their economic institutions, their political institutions, political phenomena, but, but they are affected in some way by economic phenomena. Okay? In this sense, in this sense, in this sense, uh, uh, Weber uh, made the way Weber made uh, three types of economic phenomena, namely uh, economic phenomena, uh, economically relevant phenomena, and economically conditioned phenomena. Okay, the way he made that. Okay, uh, it is also important to 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 see uh, how economy and religion cannot be separated in our day to day life for Weber, not for Marx, not for Marx, okay? mm. but for Weber. In the, in the modernist construal, in the classic statements of sociological modernism, okay, these two are the standout performers and, and, and uh, uh, you will see that why Weber uh, stressed on uh, the relationship between economic economy and religion can be understood through these these uh, three types of economic phenomena. Okay. Okay. Then what we have discussed today, we have in this lecture we have discussed we we started with. Uh, interpretative understanding, I mean interpretive sociology, I mean how interpretative understanding is a method that stresses uh, the importance of understanding of intentional human action, okay. then understanding at Verstehen. Okay. Uh, uh, then we have discussed how Verstehen uh, is not a method at all, but an objective and achievement or a goal. It is a distinctive type of knowledge which may be achieved by a variety of methods or no method at all. I mean the concept of Verstehen refers primarily to the spontaneous and immediate recognition of acts and their meanings in everyday life. And then we have discussed interpretative understanding has two parts, I mean interpretation of the textual and linguistic meaning of a cultural product and then value interpretation does not in involve evaluation of action or product, but involves selective conceptualization of the object in relation to some value, be it social value, be it aesthetic value, be it cognitive value. And values, I mean value interpretation is a byproduct of uh, the combination of cultural relevance and meanings uh, and the way we select is based on cultural relevance. Value for a sociologist is always an object of study, interpretative understanding may be of two types, direct or observational understanding indirect and explanatory understanding. Then we have discussed direct and or observational understanding in detail and then we have discussed uh, um, imaginative identification, rule governed sad culture, uh, 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 then culture by Weber, uh, then explanation, uh, uh, explanation must be adequate at the level of meaning as well as statistical generalizations and adequacy is based on generalizations and ge generalizations are based on experience. And then we have discussed uh, if motives are the antecedent then social ac action will be consequent, how multiple motives can lead to a similar or same kind of uh, social action. And then we have discussed three types of economic phenomena by Weber namely economic phenomena, economically relevant phenomena and economically conditioned phenomena. In the uh, and in this sense, according to Weber, economy and religion cannot be separated in our day to day life. Uh, in, in the, in against the backdrop of this, we are going to uh, discuss in the next lecture, Weber's interpretation of modernity uh, through the lenses of holism or totality, uh, mm, uh, reflexivity, rationality and social movements, I mean those four central philosophical and political foundations of modernity. Thank you.